In the second year of America's gay 90s, the country was experiencing a period of unprecedented growth. Industrial growth through science and technology, population growth through immigration, and territorial growth through Western expansion. Located in the northeast corner of Butler County in the southwest corner of the state of Ohio, the city of Middletown was celebrating its 100th year of steady growth. Settled by pioneers from the country's eastern states, Middletown's progress could be defined by a single word, water. The original settlement was located on the banks of the Great Miami River, which provided the necessary water for mills of all sorts, grist mills, flour mills, and sawmills. In 1825, work began in Middletown on the Miami Canal on the town's eastern border. The canal provided a means of transporting goods and supplies to larger markets and people to nearby cities. By 1845, the Miami and Erie Canal stretched from Cincinnati to Lake Erie. When a hydraulic canal was built in 1852, diverting water from the canal to power machinery, Middletown saw its first heavy industry, paper. The paper industry drew from another source of water, the huge underground reservoir of pure, clean water left by the Wisconsin Glacier some 15,000 years prior. By 1891, eight paper companies were located on or near the city of Middletown, as well as two large tobacco firms. The population had grown to over 7,600 citizens, and a Middletown native, James E. Campbell, was in his second year as Ohio's governor. The country's president also had ties to the area. Benjamin Harrison, from nearby Cincinnati, was an 1852 graduate of Miami University in Western Butler County. During 1891, social, cultural, and educational changes were taking place with the building of the Methodist Episcopal Church on Broadway Street, a new three-story school building at Main Street and Manchester Avenue, and a new opera house on South Main Street, built and funded by industrialist Paul J. Sorg. As Middletown continued to prosper and its citizenry increased, the city was faced with a new challenge, an inevitable part of life itself, death. By 1891, two cemeteries in Middletown had provided the final resting place for many local citizens. Calvary Cemetery, located on Clark Street, and Middletown Cemetery, platted in 1827 on the eastern outskirts of the city, but as the population increased, these cemeteries were mostly filled. Earlier that year, local business leaders decided that a larger, more creative cemetery was needed. They began to look for land. Cemeteries, as dwelling places for the dead, appear in every culture's history. Early America was settled as an agrarian country, and most settlers buried their dead in small family plots or in larger graveyards with neighboring families. Many early churches had burial grounds on their property for their deceased congregation. The country's formal cemeteries date to the early 19th century with privately owned or municipally owned cemeteries located outside of the city limits. During this rural cemetery movement begun in 1831, cemeteries now included landscaped gardens with ornamental entry gates, winding roads, and picturesque vistas. Graves of the wealthy were often adorned with large, elaborately carved monuments. Cemeteries continue as places to contain the dead, but were now designed for the living. The 
The Woodside Cemetery Association of Middletown was incorporated by the state of Ohio on June 23, 1891. Five trustees were elected to perform the business affairs of the association. W. H. Johnson, James Lawrence, Dr. T. A. Dickey, V. C. Hatfield, and William Caldwell. Looking for land suitable for a new cemetery, James Lawrence, Dr. Dickey, and Victor Hatfield settled on a 103-acre farm south of the city owned by the Winton family. In 1891, they purchased the land under Dr. Dickey's name. Two more city leaders, William Caldwell and W.H. Johnson, were added to the organization, which then acquired the land from Dr. Dickey. Next, the organization contracted with the newly formed Cincinnati firm, Earnshaw and Punchon, to design the new cemetery. A civil engineer, Joseph Earnshaw, had assisted landscape gardener Adolf Strauch in planning Cincinnati Spring Grove Cemetery in 1844, the first rural cemetery beyond the eastern states. Sales of lots at Woodside began in August. The first person to be buried in the new cemetery was George Lawrence on December 31, 1891. The original plat included two large feeder ponds for the adjacent Miami and Erie Canal that allowed for runoff from water for raising and lowering nearby canal locks. The ponds further enhanced the beauty of the grounds. Although 100 years would pass before Woodside would officially add the word Arboretum to its name, the original plat of Woodside identified species and trees already on the property and more to be planted. Avenues throughout the cemetery were named for different species. The decoration of soldiers' graves with flowers is an ancient custom. In the United States, it began before the Civil War, but that conflict with its unexpected massive casualties prompted a new cultural approach to memorialization. The origins of Decoration Day are complicated. Some historians claim it began in the South with ladies' organizations decorating the graves of Confederate soldiers from the very first battle and continuing throughout the war. In 1868, General John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief of the GAR, or Grand Army of the Republic, an organization of Union Civil War veterans, issued General Order No. 11, calling for a National Day of Remembrance of the Civil War Decoration Day was quickly adopted in the North and memorial events began on the chosen date, May 30th. Southern states, however, continued to honor their dead on separate days until after World War I. It was not until 1968 that the United States Congress established Memorial Day as a federal holiday to be held on the last Monday in May. As 1894 began, events took place that would greatly affect the city of Middletown and its new cemetery. On February 9th, Ohio's third district representative in Congress, George W. Houck, died suddenly and a scramble began to fill his seat. The Ohio third district then include Butler, Preble, and Montgomery counties and on February 12th, the Middletown Signal newspaper suggested that Paul J. Sorg, Middletown industrialist, be considered for the position. On April 4th, 
the Democratic District Convention was held in Miamisburg, and after each county caucus in the morning, the convention was called to order at Baum's Opera House at 11 o'clock. After some speeches, Middletown's Benjamin Harwitz took the platform and nominated Paul J. Sorg. Sorg accepted, and on May 1st, he won in a special election and was sworn in on May 26th. Sorg wasted no time establishing himself as a friend of the old soldier by taking up over 400 veterans' cases with the pension department. When the national election was held on November the 6th, he was elected to a full two-year term. As Decoration Day approached in 1895, the trustees of Woodside Cemetery voted to set aside from the whole Section 5 a large triangular subdivision for the burial of soldier dead and the erection of such a monument as might be determined upon in the future. On May 3rd, a deed was executed for the section, and on Decoration Day, a dedication service was held to establish the new military section. Fittingly, the Honorable Paul J. Sorg was invited to give an address at the cemetery. He suggested a monument honoring veterans be erected at an early date. The Woodside trustees agreed to proceed, and Sorg hired F. M. Andrews, a Dayton architect, to draw a sketch of the monument using native boulders. Sorg challenged the community to raise the funds, and that fall a subscription campaign was begun. Two years later, in 1897, Sorg was invited to make a special presentation at the Decoration Day ceremonies at Woodside Cemetery. Sorg announced that he was presenting three large cannons made available by a U.S. government act to the local GAR posts in Middletown. The 10,000-pound cannons were cast at the West Point Foundry in 1863 and placed aboard the USS Ohio naval ship. The three cannons were to be placed in the three corners of the new military veterans section. At the end of his speech that day, Sorg mentioned that the progress of funding the stone monument he had suggested two years prior and finished by stating, Now in conclusion, I want to supplement my suggestion of a monument by a proposition. If you will build the stone part, I will buy for you a handsome bronze figure to be put on it. As the fundraising campaign continued, it became apparent that this method of securing funds was too slow and uncertain. A bigger plan was needed. In nearby Hamilton, Ohio, at a meeting of post number 96 of the GAR, a committee was formed in 1897 to look into a plan to commemorate the illustrious gallant services of Butler County men in the Army and Navy in their country's defense, and also the names and prowess of the makers of the West, the pioneers of Western civilization. On April 25th, 1898, the General Assembly of Ohio passed an act authorizing the levy of a tax of ten twelfths of a mill on the dollar on all taxable property in Butler County for a period of three consecutive years to be collected annually. Nine twelfths of the total would go to the county monument to be located on the west side of Southwater Street at High Street in Hamilton and one-twelfth for a Middletown monument. By January 1902, plans and drawings for the Middletown monument were secured and construction was underway. The design called for a boulder shaft 45 feet high, topped by a bronze sculpture of a Civil War soldier. The foundation was in place and boulders were collected from farmers' fields. By this time, two-thirds of the money needed had been collected, but until the balance was secured, work was not projected to continue until the following year. In May 1902, 
Middletown mourned the death of Paul J. Sorg, the city leader who had given so much to the community. On Saturday, May 31st, after a family ceremony at Sorg's mansion, the body was moved to the Opera House to lay in state from 12 to 2 o'clock. A funeral procession was then formed to Woodside Cemetery and Sorg's final resting place near the Soldier Monument to which he had contributed so much. Tributes poured in from all over the country. On November 27th, the great bronze statue arrived and the next day, with the stonework complete, a tall derrick erected by John McFall of Hino lifted the 3,000 pound figure and placed it on top of the stone shaft. The same day the statue arrived, the cornerstone was laid for the county monument in Hamilton. On Wednesday, December 17, 1902, at an impressive ceremony beginning at Sorg's Opera House, followed by a parade to Woodside Cemetery, the Soldier and Sailor's Monument was dedicated. Paul J. Sorg's daughter, Miss Ada Sorg, accompanied by her brother Paul Arthur and mother Jenny, had the honor of unveiling the bronze soldier gifted by her father. After a prayer, the playing of the national anthem and taps, the ceremony ended. The soldier's monument, suggested by Paul J. Sorg seven and a half years earlier, was now a reality. As Paul J. Sorg was laid to rest in his mausoleum at Woodside Cemetery, the torch of leadership was passed to a young man from Cincinnati who was already having an impact on the community in this new century. By 1902, George M. Verity's new company, the American Rolling Mill Company, or Armco, had tapped its first heat of molten iron. At the cornerstone laying ceremony just two years earlier, the Middletown Signal heralded the arrival of the company as the beginning of a great work that is destined to provide an immense value to Middletown's future welfare. By this time, many of the early community leaders had been interred at Woodside Cemetery, their monuments a testament to their historical legacy. Harding, Sebald, Lefferson, Barnett's, and others in the years to come, they would be joined by future generations of leaders and the men who toiled in their factories and their families. Not yet two decades into the 20th century, much of Europe was at war. America watched closely, anticipating its eventual involvement. Companies like Armco, having completed a gigantic new mill on the eastern outskirts of the city, prospered, supplying armaments to the Triple Entente, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, the Russian Empire, and the French Third Republic. But in 1917, catastrophic naval disaster in the Atlantic Ocean led to America's entry into the war and the addition of four million men and women for the Allied powers. Over the next 19 months until the armistice in November 1918, more than 600 men and women from the Middletown area served and 40 paid the ultimate price. Some are buried in Middletown at Woodside and other Middletown cemeteries, while some never returned home and lay buried in military cemeteries in Europe. In the summer of 1927, the Ohio Association of Cemetery Superintendents and Officials held its annual convention at Woodside Cemetery. Their host for the event was Woodside Superintendent George Class. Members stayed at the still new Manchester Hotel and were given a tour of Armco. Their choice of Woodside as a site for their convention was recognition of the cemetery as one of the most beautiful in the state of Ohio if not the U.S. Earlier that year, the Ohio legislature passed a bill to officially abandon the Miami and Erie Canal, 
The canal had long outlived its usefulness, and the plan was to turn the old waterway into a new superhighway for modern transportation. At midnight on Friday, November the 1st, 1929, the water feeding the canal at the state dam was shut off, and the next day Middletown celebrated a towpath jubilee with a huge parade to the site of the beginning of the canal 104 years prior. Canal days were over. Sadly for Woodside Cemetery, the draining of water in the canal meant that its two lakes would now be deprived of water. Members of the Cemetery Association appeared before the Middletown City Commission in January 1930, asking the city supply the two lakes with water at a low rate but it was not until June that this proposal from Woodside officials for water was accepted by the commission. In 1929, one of the original cemetery trustees, V.C. Hatfield, founder of Hatfield Coal Company, died, and in 1930 his widow hired C.O. Boyle, a Cincinnati architect, to design a new main entrance for Woodside in his honor. The beautiful entrance was built by F. Nelson High of Cincinnati. By 1937, the trustees of Woodside had decided to build a new office building and hired local architect Harold Getz to design the structure. In October, the local B.D. Morgan Company was selected to be the general contractor, and one year later, on October 7, 1938, the trustees held their first meeting in the building. After the end of the Great War in 1918 and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles the next year, most of Europe continued in a state of unrest. Empires had crumbled, boundaries redrawn, and nationalism was on the rise. By 1930, most countries had found some stability except for Germany. Defeated in the war, Germany was in chaos until an obscure political party began to gather momentum in the 1920s. By the end of 1934, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, the Nazi Party, had taken over the German government and Adolf Hitler was now der Führer, the leader. Two years later, in defiance of the Versailles Treaty, Hitler began his land grab. The Rhineland, Austria, and the Sudetenland. Peaceful countries were alarmed but did nothing until his invasion of Poland in 1939 proved the final straw and the Second World War began. As it had in World War I, America stayed neutral until the Japanese attack at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Of the 16 million Americans who serve, over 400,000 died, including 203 from the Middletown area. The idea of a war memorial at Woodside began in the spring of 1945, just as the war in Europe was ending when J.R. Cox, Graves' registration officer for the local American Legion, advanced the concept of providing grave markers at Woodside Cemetery for each man or woman who died during World War II. In June, the local Chamber of Commerce appointed a committee to study the project, and from an idea presented by the Legion, the grave marker concept was expanded to include permanent grave sites a memorial plaza, and a memorial chapel. In 1946, an organization of Middletown War Mothers met with the Woodside Cemetery trustees to request a new veterans section. Section 5 was nearly full with the veterans of World War I, the Boxer Rebellion, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War. Woodside trustees voted to donate seven acres to a new section, three, and at a meeting at the Civic Association in September of 1947, representatives of the War Mothers, 
the War Memorial Committee, and the local American Legion approved plans for grave-sized plots for each local veteran who died in the war, the construction of a memorial plaza, and a memorial chapel. A fund drive began in November under the direction of Martin Coffey. The 10-day campaign easily reached its goal of $125,000 and more was pledged. Describing the effort, Coffey stated that it was a reflection of the true spirit of the community's respect for World War II dead. Navy veteran William Verity, grandson of armed co-founder George M. Verity, spoke at the meeting on behalf of Legion Post Commander Harold Getz. He stated that graveside plots would be provided for all servicemen and women who died between Pearl Harbor Day, December 7, 1941, and VJ Day, Victory Over Japan Day, August 15, 1945. The plots, beside providing a place of worship for relatives, could also be used for the burial of the war dead who would be returned from overseas burial grounds and for those who died at the United States while serving in the armed forces. Another section of the plot would be provided for the burial of those who served during the war but died after its end. On January 16, 1948, the first meeting of the War Memorial Committee was held at the American Legion Building and plans moved ahead quickly. Subcommittees were formed and the work began. Proposal for the landscape design were sent to several firms in March 1948 and the firm of Henry Fletcher Kenny Landscape Architects was chosen. During the next year, the marble crosses were placed and the Memorial Plaza was completed. A Middletown Journal article on January the 8th, 1950, announced that work would soon begin on the Memorial Chapel, completing what it called Middletown's Little Arlington, after Arlington Cemetery in Washington, D.C. A drawing of the proposed chapel was prepared by Middletown architect Carl H. Martin. William Verity, chair of the chapel committee, reported to the General Committee that a bid of $42,837 had been submitted by Broughton Construction Company. The bid was approved and the contract awarded. Already underway was the design for three stained glass windows by Robert M. Matkeff of Yellow Springs, Ohio. The windows were designed to pay tribute to all branches of the service and the history of notable soldiers dating back to biblical times. They would be installed in 1951. On March 20, 1950, several hundred Middletown citizens gathered at Woodside for the cornerstone laying of the new Memorial Chapel. Ben Bender, chairman of the War Memorial Committee, stressed the all faiths purpose for which the non-denominational chapel would serve and praise the many citizens and organizations responsible for the success of the fundraising drive. It was hoped that the exterior of the chapel would be completed by Memorial Day. As the work of the War Memorial Committee was near completion, another international conflict in East Asia was just heating up when North Korean military forces crossed the 38th parallel and invaded South Korea. By June 1950, America was involved in another war. Just a decade and a half later, Americans were fighting in the Southeast Asian country of Vietnam. Korean War veterans and Vietnam veterans would be honored with memorials at Woodside Cemetery placed in 1986 and 1987. On the home front, Middletown was honoring its local fallen heroes when, in October 1980, land was set aside in Section 3 for a police and fire memorial. A fundraising campaign called Signal Thanks was co-chaired by John Souter and William Hollister, and ground was broken in 1982. Fire Chief Vic Oval and Police Chief Russell Dwyer led the dedication ceremony on May 29, 1983.
The concept of mausoleums has been around for millennia, deriving its name from the tomb of the Persian king Masalos at Halicarnassus, built in 353 BCE. Defined as a freestanding building constructed as a monument, mausoleums enclose a burial chamber or crypt for the deceased person or persons and above ground tomb. There are several family mausoleums located in Woodside Cemetery, notably the Sorg Mausoleum and the Gardner Mausoleum. While the concept of community mausoleums dates to the end of the 19th century, the so-called modern community mausoleum originated with an Ohio man named William Ira Hood, a traveling salesman and inventor. Hood and his business partner, James Chesrowan, founded the National Mausoleum Company and built the first community mausoleum in Ganges, Ohio in 1907. The idea of compartment mausoleums was widely accepted and future builders promoted them as an affordable way to bring scientific and sanitary body preservation to the masses. By the mid 20th century, community mausoleums now reflected contemporary tastes in style, materials, and architecture. In 1968, the trustees of Woodside Cemetery decided to build a community mausoleum and contracted with the J.C. Milne Company, one of the world's largest designers and builders of mausoleums. The original building with crypt fronts of polished carnation red granite and Sierra white columns was completed in 1969, and the plan allowed for future expansion, which occurred in 1978, again in 1985, and 1992, and the year 2006. The original master plan included eight building phases outlining a courtyard with garden areas. Cremation is an ancient practice generally thought to date during the early Stone Age around 3000 BC. By 400 AD, earth burial had replaced cremation except during times of plague or war. Modern cremation dates to the 1870s during a movement in Europe to reintroduce cremation as a viable method for body final disposition. The first crematory in North America was built in Washington, Pennsylvania in 1876. By 1913, when the Cremation Association of America was founded, there were 52 crematories in North America. 100 years later, cremation had become more common than burial in the United States. As cremations became more acceptable, Woodside Cemetery opened a scattering garden with a seven-foot-tall gray granite monolith that allowed for bronze name plaques to be installed on all four sides. Six years later, Woodside's general manager, Fred Weir, announced plans to construct a cremation facility only the second in Butler County then. A local firm, Decker and Associates, designed the facility and it opened in 1996. As the city of Middletown celebrated its bicentennial in 1991, Woodside Cemetery celebrated its 100th birthday along with the gift of additional land from the city, including the Old Canal towpath along Verity Parkway. Woodside landscaped and reseeded the land and erected a new fence. Since its beginning, Woodside Cemetery has been committed to creating and maintaining the natural surroundings of its beautiful grounds. To demonstrate this commitment and to celebrate its 110th year, the word Arboretum was added to the Woodside Cemetery name. Ground Superintendent and Horticulturalist Brad Dreyer created a large map listing over 2,000 trees and shrubs, showing their location on the grounds. 200 specimen trees were also identified with nameplates giving the common name 
and the Latin scientific name. Before Woodside Cemetery was created, the annual Decoration Day, later Memorial Day, ceremonies were held at two cemeteries at the city. In 1884, a count described a parade led by the Middletown Cornet Band to Calvary Cemetery, where young girls of the Holy Trinity Church strewed the graves with beautiful wreaths and flowers. The command then returned to the GAR Hall, regrouped, and proceeded to the city cemetery on First Street, again led by the Cornet Band and followed by the Banker Post members Captain Knight's broom brigade of young ladies, two or three hundred school children, a long line of carriages, and a vast concourse of citizens on foot. The first Decoration Day ceremony held at Woodside Cemetery was on May 30, 1895, during which Paul J. Sorg first suggested the erection of the Soldiers' Monument. Since then, Memorial Day ceremonies have been held every year at Woodside to commemorate those who gave their lives in the cause of freedom. In November 1919, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day, honoring the end of World War I on that day in 1918. Legislation in 1938 created Armistice Day as the legal U.S. holiday, but in 1954, after World War II and the Korean War, Congress amended the 1938 Act by substituting the word Armistice for veterans, honoring American veterans of all wars. Woodside Cemetery and Arboretum has continued to honor Middletown area veterans every year at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. In the year 2000, a committee of veterans was formed to study the feasibility of honoring all area veterans who have served in our country at times of peace and war since Middletown was settled. Special emphasis was to be placed on those who lost their lives while serving. The committee, led by Judge Tony Vallon, was expanded in 2001 to include a wider segment of the community and subcommittees were formed to tackle the work of site selection, memorial design, fundraising, and much more. A site at Woodside Cemetery in Arboretum was selected adjacent to other military memorials. Next. Several companies were invited to submit designs for the memorial, and the design of Eric Fogarty, president of Dodds Monuments, was chosen. The design includes a 54-foot-long, 8-foot-high curved wall of black granite on which are laser-etched military images from the collection of the nationally recognized artist Mort Kunstler. Also inscribed on the wall are the names of those with a connection to this area who died while serving their country, from the Mexican War to Operation Enduring Freedom. Like the Civil War monument erected at Woodside in 1902, the building of this memorial was truly a community effort. Fundraising began with several women's auxiliary organizations and expanded to individual and corporate donations. The community response was overwhelming and enough funds were raised to cover the cost of the memorial and establish a scholarship fund. Appropriately, the memorial was dedicated on July the 4th, 2004, and five years later a rededication ceremony was held. Recognized as one of the most outstanding veterans memorials, it continues to attract visitors throughout the country and the world to Woodside. As the operations of Woodside Cemetery and Arboretum continued to expand, 
the need for additional office space was determined. And in 2005, ground was broken for a new office complex with six offices and a community meeting space. The building was dedicated in January of 2006, Woodside's 115th year. Five years later, the almost 70-year-old former office building was renovated as a cremation niche columbarium designed to hold ashes above ground with the urn placed in a recessed compartment. Housed in the historic structure are 407 niches with both glass and granite fronts. On Labor Day 2008, Woodside Cemetery and Arboretum began the tradition of musical concerts on the grounds in front of the Memorial Chapel. The first concert was presented by the Middletown Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Maestro Carmen de Leon, and the annual Labor Day concerts continued for the next 11 years until the COVID-19 pandemic curtailed most group activities in 2020. In 2021, the annual concert was renewed with the studio orchestra of the Kentucky Symphony and the No Promises Vocal Band. November 2020 saw an addition to Woodside Cemetery when two long-forgotten monuments were moved from their location on Route 4. Part of the World War I Road of Remembrance Memorial dedicated in 1920, the two monuments had been moved during road construction in the mid-1950s to locations not easily accessible to the public. Through an effort by the Middletown Historical Society, the monuments, listing the names of Middletown veterans of World War I, were moved to Woodside's military section. The word cemetery comes from a Greek word meaning sleeping place. What began as simple burial grounds and graveyards has evolved into beautiful green spaces, sometimes referred to as memorial parks, with an emphasis on memory. But these silent landscapes have always been regarded as reverent places, places to honor the memories of loved ones, places to honor the service and sacrifice of veterans, of police and fire protectors, and others who serve the public. Over time, cemeteries have become outdoor museums, historical and cultural landscapes. The history of Woodside Cemetery and Arboretum, which began as Middletown entered its second century, continues to serve this community as the link between the living and the dead, the past and the present. Woodside Cemetery is where memories live.